Hi everybody, welcome to Tri-Cities Community Television, sponsored by TELUS Optic TV. My name is Patrick McCarthy, and we're here today with Ken Kuhn from the, uh, I want to say, the Senior Action Society. So welcome, Ken. Welcome. So I, I'm, I'm, I know you've changed your name, so how do people usually know the Senior Action Society? So we, first of all, we're the Tri-Cities Senior Planning Network. And so the word planning, you know, we're always planning things that are putting on events. So we, we wanted to make a change to action. So action items, we still do events, et cetera. But the main thing is that we change to action society. And society, under the Societies Act, we can now apply for funding and grants and stuff like that. So yeah. that's, that's been great for us to get some uh, new horizons for seniors grants. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, name, they always say name is important because if it's very clear and short what you do, you know, it sounds terrible, but those grants are basically looking for those keywords and it sounds like you're, you've got action and society in there and seniors, you've got the, the three big hitters, so that's, yeah. that's great. Um, can you tell folks a little bit about what your society does and, and why it exists? So, in, you know, we're trying to be a voice for seniors in the Tri-Cities and, and it's really important because it, seems like the city councils and some of the people out there uh, are not focusing in on seniors. So seniors and age friendly. So one of the things that uh, I feel is really important is that we focus in our communities being age friendly. And age friendly is not just seniors and old people. It's uh, when I think of it, it's eight to 80. So someone who's uh, a, a young mother who's got some young kids who's pushing along, they need benches. They need some washrooms. They need some uh, trails around uh, the community that are safe. And the same with seniors. So it, it's important that we have age-friendly communities. And that's the one, of the one of our focuses. How do you think that the, in the Tri-Cities, anyway, when it comes to seniors, I mean, we've, you guys represent three of the regions, or four if you count the Anmore. How do you rate uh, those, those municipalities' focus on, on seniors in general? I would not want to <laughs> rate them uh, because they, they all think that they're, uh, for instance, Poco uh, calls himself an age-friendly society or an age-friendly community. And uh, Port Moody has just got that designation lately. Uh, but in my opinion, they haven't worked to, to uh, command that. Uh, they don't have those features in place of an age-friendly community. Uh, you can get the grant and do a little bit of studying and that, but it, it's the action, putting things, like I mentioned, just simple ones like the washrooms and benches and signage. Those are important things and it, they're not out there in our Tri-Cities communities. Yeah, for me, I use the word ageism. So, you know, I'm 58 years of age, right? To me, when I, before I was 50, I didn't know what ageism was. But I, when I hit 50, I kind of felt, I didn't feel any different, but I felt like it was a little change in, in sort of, uh, oh, you're 50. So, so, but when you're, when we talk about age, I think, you know, sometimes 50 to, like you said, 80, but it's almost like there's three levels of age in there. There's a, I call the teenager 50 and the, you know, and sort of that middle class, or sorry, middle-aged and more senior person, you know, the yeah. super senior we call them in the 80s. So do you see that kind of, you're well, bucketed together? Yeah, I, I mean to say the same thing, you know, a one-year-old compared to a 30-year-old, mm -hmm. uh, that's a big difference. And it's the same for 50 to 80, 90 years old. And people are living much longer now. Uh, believe it or not, one-third of the people in the Tri-Cities are over 50. Mm -hmm. And so you're almost there. And uh, thank you. Well, you are there <laughs> <laughs> next week. <laughs> and so we have to be thinking forward. You know, we are all going to age there. And so uh, we've somewhat worked on getting rid of sexism and racism, but ageism is still rampant. You open up a birthday card and it's making fun of that person who needs a nap and the way you dress and all those things. And, and we don't need to have that. We need to put things in place so that we age gracefully, everybody, because everyone's going to get there. So, so uh, I, I know you do lots of forums, so can you explain a bit about the forums and what they kind of address in the community? So one of the things that we want to do to uh, get seniors out uh, in the community, uh, we put on these forums and, and we put on a housing forum, we put on a transportation forum, we put on an, uh, 
elder abuse forum, age-friendly forum, uh, and we basically get about 250 to 300 people out in the community. We have about uh, 24 to 25 exhibitors, and everyone gets a free lunch. It's an all-day event. They get there at 9 o'clock and basically leave at 3.30, and it, we have great speakers. Isabel McKenzie's been there, etc., cetera, uh, and like high-level speakers, and uh, so I have a Pathways to Better Health Forum coming up on June the 8th of this year. And uh, we've got, uh, you know, Dr. Gia uh, Hugh, who's going to be speaking, uh, and several other key speakers who are across Canada uh, speaking on, say, vaccinations for seniors, uh, why it's important, or dementia, or all sorts of different uh, speakers on those different topics. So it it's a, it's a great opportunity for seniors to come out. They, they get a free lunch, they get swag bags, they have you know the, some of the retirement residences, uh, all the different uh, places that they would be needing over the next uh, 10, 20 years are going to be there as exhibitors. So it's a good uh, spot to get some good information. So can you give me a sense of, like, you have these forums, and I'm a senior person, I go to these forums, it's around transportation, or maybe it's around uh, elder abuse. Is there a trans? Is something transitional in that person? Is something changing in that person, or some of those people as they come out? Are you seeing this sort of you know, the, the penny drops, the light go, the light bulb goes off, or there changes their life? Do you, do you see those kind of scenarios? Yeah, it gives them a, a chance to ask some questions. Like say, uh, one of our other ones, uh, they were t talking about you know lack of access to a medical doctor, and some of the and we do have a roving mic that goes out and asks some. You know, people get a chance to ask questions of the people up, up on the uh, front and they say like, how do I have, get access to a doctor or some of these uh, things like that. And it, it's, it gives people a chance to, you know, ask some questions that they wouldn't normally have had a chance to. And yeah, I mean, the light may go on for different things. They'll say, oh, I didn't really know that existed. You know. Uh, I could tell you one right now, BC211. Uh, I would guess that most of the people watching don't know what BC211 is. But no, do. you don't? No. Okay, so I'll grab my phone here. <laughs> and so BC211 is a phone number that you can call or text, and it's got access uh, information for counseling, addiction, transportation, housing, and it's free. Mm -hmm. And it comes in about 20 different languages. So yeah. those are some things that we try to get out to all the people attending. So so also you hear about the, like I think, you know, you talk about elder abuse, right? Which I, I think that's kind of like abuse of any nature is, you know, <laughs> mental, financial, you know, uh, yeah. and physical, it has all elements. So is, was that, is that really one of the main uh, things that keeps you awake at night or one of the things that you really, top of your list to kind of, uh, uh, resolve or at least fix or we're not going to fix it uh, unfortunately and because of COVID it's it's gotten even worse and, and so I, I am part of the BC Association of Community Response Networks and what we do is we give awareness about elder abuse we don't try to fix it uh, but when I give workshops we talk about you know the, the whole thing about physical abuse financial abuse and etc and and where you can go to get some help. And uh, in our cultures in the Tri-Cities, for sure, there are lots of different cultures. It's more important for you to keep it within. You know, if I've got a problem within my family, I'm not gonna share that out there because in my culture, we don't do that. We just keep it to ourselves. And so we have some concerns to worry about that way. And, and so when I give workshops to say some success groups, you know, that may be Iranian or Asian or whatever, that it's part of their culture to keep it within. And so we just have to help them know that there are places like Seniors First BC or BC 211, places that they can go for help if they want it. But again, abuse is uh, abuse, uh, neglect or self-neglect. You know, we also do, uh, if you choose to have self-neglect, if you choose to be a hoarder and live in squalor, etc., that's your choice. We 
we can't do anything about that, although the, the fire marshal may, you know, come in and want to do some things to make it safer or whatever. But yeah, it doesn't keep me awake at night, yeah. but we do want to make sure that that information gets out to people. Yeah, you, you hit the, uh, one of the things you, you were talking about there is, is you talk about this, you know, you're thriving or surviving. And I, and I think sometimes it, it's a medical term where in a sense you're almost giving up. As a senior person, your, your health is degrading because you really don't see you know, a light, a future, or, or a sense of where you're going. So is, is that kind of the combination of mental health and sort of health care? Well, we certainly have the mental health thing happening during COVID. And, and at this uh, Pathways to Better Health Forum, we're going to be having some mental health uh, speakers there. And it's important. And that's one of the other things I talk about is, uh, you know, vaccinations. It's important to get vaccinations uh, for seniors to keep you in a better lifestyle. Yeah. You know, what we don't want to have is a decline in our daily living spaces that we, you know, getting dressed in the morning, you know, making your breakfast, uh, you know, all those sorts of things that are daily living uh, activities that we expect to do. But if we don't keep eating well, getting some exercise, then we do have that decline. We don't want that. So part of that whole thing about forums and events and our newsletters that we do, I'm trying to encourage people to stay active, to you know, get all the information that are in the newsletters and go for it. And you, you know, for me anyway, I, do you find technology is a barrier? I mean, we talked like 50 to 80. So it seems to me, you know, there's no posters anymore. There's no news, physical newsletters. You're talking about a newsletter, but it's a digital one. So do you think a lot of times that interaction with the cities or within, you know, sort of the community groups are, not, are missing some of the standard paper and ink sort of processes of communication that, that maybe senior folks Certainly, to. certainly. Uh, I mean, a person like me who's tech savvy, etc., I find it easy. A and I teach people about it. I, I have a, a website called Savvy Cyber Seniors uh, and, and try to get people to learn how to do email, how to do Facebook, FaceTime, and things like that so they can talk to their grandkids. Uh, but it is a challenge. We have uh, some of our seniors who don't even have a cell phone. Uh, which I couldn't live without one because my whole schedule is so busy and, and we like to be in contact. And when I do the Coquitlam Crunch, going up the crunch, I carry it just in case I run into someone who has a heart attack or needs help. So it, it's immediately there. So it's something that we, you and I, didn't have growing up as kids. Yeah. But it's, it's a good thing, you know, and, and it shouldn't scare people. I encourage people to be part of the the learning of it. Uh, it it's not that scary and uh, in our group come to our group and we will certainly help you learn if you want. Well you, you've got also got some fun things I mean some of those forums are pretty you know they're important and they can be a bit heavy but uh, I noticed you've got Valentine's Day, Day Zoom party so obviously some some senior folks really uh, have jumped on Zoom during COVID so and you've just done a movie matinee, so just there is some fun elements to this. This uh, so give us a sense of what what you're doing there. So uh, we we had a free matinee, Death on the Nile, uh, that people could come to. It was free admission, free pop, free popcorn. I gave them a goodie bag, and we had uh, several hundred people out there, and it was great. And it, it's again one more thing getting seniors out from COVID, et cetera, and, and it's okay, and it was safe, and, and it was great. Uh, I had tons and tons of feed, you know, good feedback. Uh, yes, we have Valentine's, St. Patrick's, Christmas, and uh, you know, during some of those things, uh, uh, like the Valentine's one, uh, we'll have, I don't know, 40, 50 people on a Zoom, and we'll ask them questions, you know, like, tell me about uh, how you met your favorite uh, spouse or whatever uh, what was your favorite date that you went on or um, and then I do a bunch of trivia things too just to make it fun and, and you you have to have a mix of, of activities for sure it sounds like your your career as a teacher is paying off you know <laughs> you now have different students um, so can you tell us any, anything you want to add that you'd want folks to remember about this uh, about your society before we, we, we say goodbye yeah just it's a bargain. Uh, 
throughout COVID, we didn't charge anything. I, I send out about a thousand uh, emails, uh, or the newsletter to a thousand people and all these activities, they get invited to it. Uh, but to join our society, it's $10. Well, guess what? At this forum, at the Pathways to Better Health, I'm gonna give them an $8 food voucher that they can choose to go to one of the four food trucks. And so you basically get your money back right away. Plus, I give tons, probably 20 or 30, $25 gift certificates and baskets and, and swag bags. And it's a, it's a no-brainer. You know, if you want to be part of the seniors community, and, and it's not, we're not sitting around just playing bridge, or I shouldn't say I'm not putting bridge or things like that down, but we're, but we're an active thing. And, it, and it's not a regular uh, thing that you have to be there every Wednesday, like golf or bridge or swimming or anything like that. It, it, we move it around the different dates. And, uh, uh, you know, one of our, we, we try to be multicultural. And so one of the events that we had at Glen Pine uh, just prior to COVID, uh, we had, uh, we called it World Fest, and it was multicultural. We had uh, probably about five or six different uh, foods available for people to taste that were free. You know, you could go taste some Iranian food or, you know, different uh, types of food from different uh, cultures. And we had entertainment probably about 14 or 15 different uh, entertainment, uh, whether it was singers or dancers or whatever up there uh, from, from different cultures. And it was wonderful. And having all those people and we had exhibitors around, it was a, an all day event. It was great and it was free. Most of these events are free. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, food always has me interested. Go. So Food and music. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so I know you talk about the newsletter. That's your major form of communication. Um, we can put it up on the, on the prompt there, but uh, it's 24 pages of, of the, I assume, as much as you need to know about what you want, should be doing the next month. So, so it, it just, email, so just email yourself or? Sure. Tri-City Senior Action Society at gmail.com. But it's been picked up by all sorts of United Way people from Vancouver reprint it. Uh, South Granville uh, Senior Society reprints, sends it out to their members and, and it's been, it's got wide distribution. And because uh, a lot of the contact information, you know, whether it's government or whatever, is in there. And it's the same whether you lived in Golden, BC, Kelowna or Vancouver. And so it, it's a great resource. And um, certainly getting lots of feedback on that. And I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for seniors. Well, uh, on behalf of Seniors, Ken, mm -hmm. I, I thank you very much for the, uh, the Seniors Action Society. And thanks for coming to the studio. It was, uh, it was a pleasure talking Great. to you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. So if you uh, want to check out the Senior Action Society, uh, that's uh, Ken Kuhn is the executive director. Just reach out, sign up for his newsletter, check out some of their events, and of course, like or subscribe to our channel on Tri-Cities Community Television. Thank you very much for watching.